All right. Hello. I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And uh, recently I've been getting to some arguments on the YouTube uh, uh, comments boards and some various videos. And I came across a guy. His name is SCB General. And uh, we've been arguing on and off for a couple of weeks here. And um, so what I did is I copy and pasted uh, a little bit um, of one of our conversations. It's just him, and I will uh, rebut uh, as we go. It's it's not because of what he said or what he believes. It's because it's what a lot of people th believe, and I'm I'm tired of creationists believing that this is a true story. Uh, the subject here is uh, evolution, and and Hugo, uh, what I want you to do for me is I want you to play devil's advocate. I want you to play the part of SCB General in this case. Ooh, I'm a thespian. Yeah, and th <laughs> this time you are, and. Uh, <laughs> I want you to pretend that you're him. Uh, no accent or anything. You don't need to be that thespian. Okay. Just, uh, just I'm read a, it. I'm a character actor. Yeah, a character. A yes. I but just... but pretend he's literate. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm being mean. <clears throat> I am educated, and I don't need some person on YouTube to tell me that evolution is the truth, which it is not. Evolution was just something conjured up by atheists to explain how the universe was created while excluding the possibility of an omnipotent being creating it. If only people knew the truth. Yeah, if people only knew the truth of how evolution came to be. Quick rundown. Darwin, the founder of evolution, matriculated at Christ College. He took his degree in 1831, tenth in the list of those who did not seek honors, to be a clergyman. Darwin started his famous journey to the Galapagos, among other destinations, on the 27th of December, 1831, the same year he got his degree, the voyage lasting until the 2nd of October, 1836. So you see, he was a Christian when he started his theory on transmutation of species. So evolution was conjured up by a Christian! Ouch! In fact, Darwin never even considered himself an atheist. His attitude was that of a tolerant non-aggression agnostic, sympathizing with and helping in the social and charitable influences of the English church in his parish. Let's move on. Organisms don't just evolve over time through macroevolution. It's genetically impossible. You are literally saying that new species can't exist. Um, fucking bananas? Scientists reconstruct the history of life using all available evidence, geology, fossils, and living organisms. The basic evolutionary mechanisms, mutation, migration, genetic drift, and natural selection, can produce major evolutionary change if given enough time. The actual definition of macroevolution, accepted by scientists, is any change at the species level or above. Microevolution is any change below the level of species. Using strategically elastic definitions like you do of micro and macro evolution when discussing the topic is just a tactic in avoidance. Whether in the lab or in nature, macroevolution is a scientific fact. Lake Victoria cichlids are a perfect example of this. I put a link down in the description box so you can teach yourself something. Also, the universe wasn't just always there. <sighs> Christ. Physicist Lawrence Krauss wrote a wonderful book titled A Universe from Nothing, in which he outlines exactly the reasons you are just 100% fucking wrong. But not in the way you think. By saying the universe wasn't just always there, you are implying that something had to create it or make it be there. That just isn't true. Empty space in any of its forms is incredibly unstable. Even empty space devoid of a single particle has mass. That mass creates a force you may have heard of. It's called gravity. <laughs> this gravity, coupled with the instability of space itself, creates particles. This is a mathematical certainty. These particles collide, much like the Higgs boson particle, and literally create mass. It's a miracle of scientific discovery without a designer. Pretty neat, huh, sport? If cosmic order is true, which it is, then it must have been organized by something with the knowledge to do so. I assume you are using the term cosmic order to describe the point in which you pull terms out of your ass and hand them to me covered in your theist bullshit. For the sake of argument, I will ascribe your words a meaning that I think encapsulates your thinking. The philosopher Anaximander is the only link to the words cosmic order I could find. He claims that nature is ruled by laws, just like human societies, and anything that disturbs the balance of nature does not last long. However, you prescribe intent to the organization of the cosmos. Why is intent necessary? You are assuming that it is organized at all. 
I would describe the universe not as organized, but as chaotic. Our existence on Earth is not evidence of a higher being, it's evidence of our existence. To say otherwise would be assumption. Look at the biological engineering for organisms. How is it possible for an explosion to create something as intricate as human beings? No single proponent for evolution has ever said that the intricacies of evolution even fucking came from the Big Bang. The Big Bang and evolution are two separate ideas that just so happen to converge at a single point, like a Venn diagram. The Big Bang describes the formation of the universe on the macro scale, and evolution describes the beginning of life on the planet Earth on the micro scale, relatively. The wonderful thing about evolution is that it gives illusion of design. After all... Explosions don't care about life sustenance. That is the first fucking thing I have agreed with you on. It only cares about fulfilling its role as an explosion. And there you go, you just fucked it all up. Once upon a time, there was an extremely hot universe that desperately needed to cool down. One day the universe had the answer to this problem. I'll create a big bang to cool me down. I like to imagine the universe you speak of, which didn't really fucking exist at all at this point, did it? Thinking to itself with all its universal know-how, Man, it's toasty in me! I better make me explode! That is what you're saying here. I know, it sounds like I'm just making shit up, doesn't it? So, it created a big bang. As a result of the explosion, Arche bacteria was created on an incredibly toxic Earth with no atmosphere. There are a lot of misconceptions surrounding the Big Bang Theory. For example, we tend to imagine a giant explosion. Experts, however, say there was no explosion. There was, and continues to be, an expansion, rather. Rather than imagining a balloon popping and releasing its contents, imagine instead an infinitesimally small balloon expanding to the size of our current universe. Also, Anyone with knowledge of biology knows archaebacteria live in those types of inhospitable conditions now. On the Earth, right fucking now, there is some thermophile somewhere just living the archaebacterium life inside a goddamn volcanic vent filled with sulfuric acid and crazy high heat. But we'll touch on that during your next ignorant statement. After millions of years, the archaebacteria decided to make itself evolve into something more complex. So it did. Ignoring the part where he once again provides sentience to the fucking bacteria, I'll tell you exactly what archaebacteria are before we continue this bullshit. There are three major known groups of archaebacteria, methanogens, halophiles, and thermophiles. The methanogens are anaerobic bacteria that produce methane. They are found in sewage treatment plants, bogs, and the intestinal tracts of ruminants. Ancient methanogens are the source of natural gas. Halophiles are bacteria that thrive in high salt concentrations, such as those found in salt lakes and pools of seawater. Thermophiles, the ones I mentioned earlier, are the heat-loving bacteria found near hydrothermal vents and hot springs. Many thermophiles are chemosynthetic, using dissolved sulfur or other elements as their energy source, and iron as the means of respiration. Archaebacteria emerge at least 35 billion years ago, and live in environments that resemble conditions existing when the Earth was young. Remember that part where I said it was right? Yeah. Millions of years later, it's now a human being! Yep, it was that simple. Fuck you. 200,000 years ago, give or take a few millennia, a new ape appeared in Africa, walking on two legs, with a high domed forehead and a large brain. Homo sapiens had arrived. Then, about 80,000 years ago, the Homo sapiens, with their use of tools, social interactions, and language, started to form small nomadic communities. Over time, the use of artificially made shelter and simple clothing decreased the amount of body hair. By 10,000 BC, we have high functioning in the frontal lobe, as is indicated by skull size and art, and can just be about called humans. In 3000 BC, Sumeria becomes the world's first civilization. So, obviously, evolution doesn't say that Humans just fucking popped into existence. Also, the Earth somehow gained an atmosphere as well. Look, I don't want this to go for an hour and a half, so I put a link down in the description box for you. Why don't you check that out, and that'll teach you exactly how the Earth created its atmosphere. <laughs> the end. That is the basic understanding of evolution. If you want to believe that your life is a complete accident, then fine. 
Well, if you want to believe that your life is based on the whims of a magic sky man, then fine. But don't tell people your irrational line of bullshit to make your beliefs sound less idiotic than the version of evolution you spew from your body of Christ-eating mouth. I'm SCB General. So I guess that's the end of that segment, Hugo. I think I got dumber reading that. I you did a great job acting though. I I, I like I like the uh, the laugh that you added. I took liberties with it. You did. You you know what though? I'm a method actor. Thank you. Thank golf you. clap. A single golf clap. No one else liked it but me. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. You're the only person I need I need acceptance from. <laughs> that's that's fair. <laughs> Fuck All you. All right. So until next time. I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this has been the Bible Reloaded. Science Bless.